Hey everybody, this is Steve. Um, I, I've been thinking about making this video and I should have made this a long time ago, but uh, I feel that because of all the questions that are coming through, that it's important for me to share this. And that is that all natural cancer cures are not for everyone. Protocols for cancer need to have the research done. I mean, there's just no two ways about it. <clears throat> and uh, I'm gonna show you an extreme example of why protocols need to be researched. But before I do that, I want to kind of explain uh, a couple things about this site, and it's called CancerTutor.com. And if you are thinking about doing any kind of a natural cure, uh, a natural path, or, or working that way towards curing your cancer without chemo or radiation or even surgery, then you need to stop at this site. Um, this site has a lot of different information on it that pertains to curing your cancer naturally. There are a number of different protocols, there, and it's based on the type of cancer that you have, um, but there are a number of different protocols that you can use. What you need to understand about protocols is that there are two types of protocols. There's one that actually kills the cancer cell that creates ap apoptosis, and then there's another one that actually converts cancer to um, to it converts the cancer cell. It doesn't kill the cell. It actually opens the cell up with an oxygen atom and then allows the cell, the microbe, to die inside the cell. And then the cell actually takes on the, uh, the, uh, the normal task of being a normal cell or either dying and just being cleared out naturally. So it's important to, or for you, to figure out which one is going to work the best. Now, one of the biggest things is, and the biggest things to know about cancer is, is that if you kill the cancer cell, it creates swelling and inflammation. If you convert the cancer cell, there is no swelling and inflammation because the cancer cell is not dying. When a cancer cell dies, what happens is your body naturally sends the white fighter cells out to clean up the area to get rid of the cell through the natural process. Um, if the cancer cell is converting, there is no need for the white blood cells or the killer cells to come because it is a natural process of converting the, the cancer cell or the non-oxygen cell into, to a producing cell. So it's important that you know which ones or which protocols will work for your particular type of cancer. This site is a, an excellent guideline because you can click on the types of cancer there are and it will tell you the types of protocols you should use. Now for instance, I'm just going to uh, do the Budwig protocol because on the very first part of the protocol it explains this cancer treatment is one of the crown jewels of alternative medicine. It is the strongest and fastest fastest acting alternative cancer treatment which does not have any restrictions placed on its use. It does not cause any inflammation or swelling. That right there is your sign that this is a converting cancer protocol. It does not kill cancer cells. It converts cancer cells to productive normal cells. If you are using a protocol that kills cancer cells and you have a brain tumor or you have a tumor close to an artery or you have a tumor close to a uh, spinal cord or something like that, you do not want to use protocols that kill cancer cells. You want to use a protocol that shrinks tumors, that converts tumors, uh, tumor cells or cancerous tumor cells back to normal cells. Okay, with that being said, let me get out of here and we're going to look at a protocol that I used, or actually not the protocol, but the results of the protocol that I used um, that didn't work for me. And I've been doing this for two years, and this lets you know that it is very easy to make a mistake or leave something out of the research uh, that you should have knew before you started the protocol and you found out later on. For some of us, we don't have this kind of time. We can't try this, and then if it doesn't work, try something else. Sometimes you will try a protocol and it will work, you will cure yourself. Sometimes you will try a protocol and it will not work and you'll have to go to a different protocol. However, if the protocol does damage, sometimes you may not be able to recover from it. So it's important that you know that. All right. So with me, I started a new protocol uh, around uh, February 2nd. February 1st or February 2nd, 2016, and this protocol consists of about 80% fruit, 20% veggies, and it was low methionine, a low methionine restricted diet. Uh, that means that over 160 milligrams and below, or 160 milligrams and below of methionine in my diet. Okay, so that means absolutely no meat whatsoever, which, you know, I didn't eat meat that much anyway. I did eat some free-range chicken, but I had to stop that, uh, but uh, that wasn't a problem, so 
completely no meat whatsoever and then the methionine you have to actually select foods that are basically low in methionine and there's a methionine chart that you can you can do that off of well at first it was working like a charm I think during the end of the first month um, I started to, to get a lot of pain from the tumor area so this is what I looked like before the uh, the actual process started okay so this was me and my uh, you can see that the tumor there's no no issue with it um, that's when I started that was around February 1st February 2nd and then after I started the protocol I would say probably a month later um, I ended up looking like that <clears throat> and you can see where the tumor down on the bottom portion of where the tumor was that there is an abscess starting to grow there so at the beginning of the second month the tumor started to take on shape pretty much like an abscess you know given that little football kind of look the abscess continued to grow and fill with pus and fluid and of course this was new to me so I really didn't know what to do I contacted the individual that actually created the protocol for me and I was told that he never experienced anyone or anyone with this type of cancer um, that it, it actually grew an abscess over the cancer well after doing a bunch of research um, you know I said well great you know I was thinking that this was really the protocol for me and then some strange things started to be revealed because of the fruit of 80 percent of the diet and my pH levels began to drop and you've heard me talk about pH levels before your pH level has to stay uh, at 7 neutral or above 7 uh, for a perfect you know environment to get rid of cancer so it's like 7.4 uh, 7.5 uh, but that is extremely important so after finding out that my pH levels began to drop this was a problem the pain started to come more frequently I was having pain from the skin stretching and the abscess growing now I can handle pain but this pain was different the pain associated with this particular condition ran from the bottom of my neck all the way to the top of my head and it was so great I couldn't even focus my eyes the pain was so so much um, at this point I would say I would just move on to one one other one this one here at this point I began to take the Advil you know and try to to decrease the inflammation I was drinking more carrot juice and as you can see in the picture the inflammation actually went down from what it was here to to what it is there but the abscess was still there and still growing so um, I started taking Advil every four hours and I was on two Advil every four hours and till probably up until I would say about two weeks ago three weeks ago I was up to about eight Advil every four hours uh, if I missed the 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 hour when I was supposed to take it it would take an hour for the Advil to kick in and I had to handle that pain uh, for that long so that was kinda crazy um, at that point I would say probably at this point right here um, I emailed the person that actually created the protocol and told them about the issues and, and whatnot and uh, I got nothing back so the abscess grew so large it became it became apparent that it needed you know medical attention it needed to be lanced and at that point I didn't even know what it was but you know it's important that you knew so on the night of 3-5 this was you know I was you know trying to figure out when I could schedule a doctor's appointment to get in and have them look at it and lance it and whatnot but on the night of 3-5 uh, 2016 um, my body decided to lance the abscess on its own the blister popped when I was sleeping and I had fluid all over my neck all over my chest my pillows and blankets were all saturated I woke only to use the restroom and was very surprised um, my wife's a nurse so she was at work she works knock shift so I had to clean and dress the wound on my own um, and it was kind of crazy because I've never seen anything like that before so it was you know I was scared because you know here it is a cancer tumor with a with an abscess over it you know that's very very scary um, but what was creating all that pain was the pressure behind the abscess um, and once it popped it created a huge hole the hole was almost about a, as big as a dime and in the next picture you'll see where the hole actually started uh, right there is where it started at right there and it got large it got larger and larger until it was almost about as big as a dime and I guess that's when it decided to pop so after cleaning and dressing the wound I thought to myself you know is this it the cats out of the bag now I got a big sore on the side of my tumor uh, once there was a wound or a sore on the tumor site most of the time people will tell you that they never heal however I took a look on the bright side 
the pain had decreased about 80%. I was able to decrease it using Advil. Um, and then something happened. Uh, this is the picture after the abscess broke. You can see that the pressure, you know, alone from where it was, it completely shrunk that area. Um, I remember, I remembered after this, you know, because the pain was so great that I had read something in Dr. Majalka's, and I'll leave his link down below, Dr. Majalka's protocol using high pH therapy, and that he stated that when the body's pH was low or below 7, the bacteria, viruses, and de degenerated microbes are having a party, basically. They're just growing at their, you know, at the whatever rate it is that they want. So it's important to know that, you know what, when your pH is down, believe me, you're going to start feeling some pain. So you might get some test strips and check your pH. Uh, a low pH invites overgrowth and all things bad. So it's important that you work on, you know, the inflammatory process. Um, as of the evening of 3.13, uh, I stopped that protocol and I don't do it anymore. Almost upon thought, I started a high pH protocol and you guessed it, mass, you guessed it massive amounts of carrot juice, cucumber juice, celery juice, beet juice, and sodium bicarb. I also started the Budwick protocol again, which consists of cottage cheese and flaxseed oil. Flaxseed is also ground and mixed with the, with the mucil. I use the mixture for breakfast and lunch. Dinner normally is salad for mixed veggies. I also mix in a gallon jug. Uh, one tablespoon of sodium bicarb and then two whole lemons juiced and one lemon sliced in pieces. Only use distilled water or clean water because you don't want, you know, contaminants in your water when you're trying to get healthy. Uh, and this, this mixture can be consumed all day. Uh, after two days of this, the pain is all but gone. My body's feeling a lot better. Um, I feel better, you know, and I, I think I look better. Uh, but I do want to show you this one other picture here, and this is of the actual tumor. So if you get grossed out by what this looks like, this was the hole, okay, the day after it popped and, you know, the swelling and stuff like that. And then this here is what it looks like uh, as of yesterday, or actually day before yesterday. Day before yesterday, this is what it looks like. So it's all clean. Uh, it's healing well. You can see all the swelling pretty much has subsided. Um, and it is, it's, it's healing. It's healing back to where it was. Um, so with that being said, you know, the important thing is to find out about uh, the type of protocol that you need. And the reason why is because for most of us, okay, most of us, especially those of you that are stage four, if you choose the wrong protocol, it could cost you your life. So you do want to make sure that you choose a protocol that either kills cancer cells, if that's the type of cancer you have, or it converts cancer cells back to normal cancer cells. And the way you tell is you go to a site like this, cancertutor.com, and you go to the types of cancers, and then they recommend the type of protocols that you can use. Okay, and then you can also read through their protocols. You can read through key articles. You can actually even search for your type of cancer on the search menu, and it'll bring up other other cancers that are very similar and the protocols that other people are using. The other thing to remember is all protocols, regardless of how they are made or who made them, do not work for everybody. You have to take into account that everyone is different. Everybody has different medical needs. Everybody is on different uh, medications or supplements. Everybody has a different weight. Everybody has a different race or nationality, which does make a difference. Uh, everybody has a different, their bodies function a different way. So it's important to know that every protocol, even if I gave you my protocol step by step and you have the same exact cancer, my protocol may not work for you because of your physical uh, uh, condition. Your physical condition could prevent my protocol from working for you. So you need to find a protocol that has worked for somebody that has something similar to what you have. And then you need to work with a naturopath or you can email places like Cancer Tutor and they will help and guide you through some of these things. And I will help and guide you through some of these things if it's something that I know about, of course. And if I don't know about it, I can find information and get you pointed to the right direction. Anyway, I'm trying to keep this video under 15 minutes. With that, I'm going to I'm gonna take off. But I hope this information helps you because it helped me a great deal. Thanks.